from the beginning, like you're, you're looking at building out a messaging strategy for the business that you're working in. Um, you need to balance marketing. You need to balance, you know, insights from sales and product, but also needs mm -hmm. from them as well. Where, where do you start with that overall process? Yeah. Yeah. I think having a very close relationship with a uh, product and sale is, is super important. Uh, this is particularly important in, uh, in B2B, but you know, if I draw back on, on my experience in B2C, I think that's, you know, that's also extremely relevant for, uh, for any marketer that's working for a, um, a kind of, you know, consumer company. Um, I look at those relationship really from, as a, as a something that it's like foundational, not just for, uh, you know, a specific product or launch or marketing messaging that, you, that you're building out, but really for uh, your overall success um, within an organization. So I think um, starting from the beginning, something that I did when I started a car, um, but really I think any job that I ever had was actually mapping out who are those individuals that I'm going to be working with cross-functionally and can I get to know them? Can I have a personal ongoing relationship with them before we even started working together? And um, I think the, the first like 30, 60 days on the job, I think is where you have more latitude to send a message to someone and say, hey, let's connect really quick. I'm really interested about what you're doing and, um, you know, how can, how can I support you, right? I think that needs to be the approach. How can I support you? Um, and so I think I would say kind of at a, at a very, very foundational level, having that level of relationship and trust, even before into go, even before you go into any product is it's what I, I think it's going to be setting you up for success. Um, I think, and as I look at, you know, those kind of internal stakeholders, the way I think about it is, um, either through cross-functional ones, product sales, but then also you want to think about some of the other groups such as like finance or ops or some of those people that are also part of, um, of your, um, you know, functioning as, as a company. And I think something that I learned, especially um, as a founder, was really trying to make people part of your journey um, and bring them on to the journey with you. So uh, on one end, you want to think about how can you support them? And on the other end, you want to think about how can you get someone, whether that's a peer or a manager, to be rooting for you as you're building out those strategies. So that's kind of a, at a foundational level. To, to go back to your question and looking more specifically um, in terms of, term of buy-in, I think uh, before you, know, you start building out a, a kind of a, a strategy, whether that's messaging or product, um, I think there are a couple of things to consider. One is that we work in a remote first environment and communication can be really tough. Um, obviously, we have Zoom, we have Slack, we have so many ways in which we can be commu communicating. But I think as you're building out that process, you really want to make sure that you understand how is your team internally communicating um, and what are the ways in which you're going to be building out that kind of collaborative approach. Um, and then the second piece is um, now more than ever, both B2B companies and you know, B2C are dealing with kind of a more difficult a macroeconomic environment, they have a leaner budget, leaner, leaner team. So really ensuring that the key initiatives that you're going to be focusing on, the key messaging that you're going to be fo focusing on are relevant. Um, I think it's essential for the success. Um, and then ultimately, the, the last piece to that, I think, is if you are not interacting with those stakeholders directly, you're not going to be able to really learn. Um, and you're not going to be able to carry through the project and the strategy in a successful way. So that I would say is from a um, kind of from a foundation perspective before you, you, anything is even started. Uh, yeah, that's that's so important. And you know, um, working externally as an agency with software companies, you know, I've seen there can be a divide between sales and marketing with you know different things like how do we qualify an MQL versus an SQL and who, who has ownership over the conversion from one to the other? And, you know, how do we improve uh, leads coming in with the resources that we have, right? So it sounds like you're focusing in your initial period on just really coming 
to an alignment on what those, you know, um, definitions are, what those KPIs that you're tracking. Yeah. Yeah. I think having very, very clear alignment on what is it we want to do? What is it we're trying to accomplish? Um, what is the timeline? What happens if we fail? And or uh, fail, it might not be the right word, but what happens if our hypothesis was not right? Right. So that's the other piece. How are we defining that hypothesis? And also, what are pivots points? This is something that I actually learned in, in managing a lot of ads um, in, the, in, the, in the kind of my, my, my previous life. But obviously, you want to know at what point we decide that the strategy is not working and we pivot into a different strategy or we decide that we start testing a different one. So I think having that alignment is, um, is, is, really, is really foundational. Um, one of the, the sentence, one of the, the things that I, that I always uh, remind myself of is that there is no failure other than poor, poor management. Um, and so when I think of, you know, poor management, to me, that is what, you know, if you don't have those pillars lined up, that is, that is a form of poor management because you could have, you could have figured those things out before, before starting. Um, yeah. 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 So. So yeah, so I think that those those key things are are really um, are really essential. I think the other piece that it's, um, I mean, relevant for everybody, but I think it, you know, especially re relevant for marketers is that a lot of your job is figuring out what is someone incentive and what is someone motivation. So or what does your audience care about? And I think that is at its core, that is what you're doing for a living. That is what you're doing for any campaign. That is what you're doing for any messaging strategy. Um, and I think you want to take that audience first mindset as you start working with cross-functional team members. So as you are about to be approaching sales or as you're about to be approaching product, um, I would start with a very small group and I would say, who are those key people that would be willing to take a yes and mindset? So not someone that would shut my idea down immediately, but someone that I know that is a proactive person, someone that I know that is collaborative. And how do I bring in, how do I bring them in into the journey as soon as possible with something that is actually relevant um, for them? So I think the way I think about it typically is like this. Let's say that we um, have a, as a company, we have a goal and we decide that we want to uh, introduce a new initiative. I'll give you a very tangible example. Uh, in Q1, uh, we launched our first uh, content show. Uh, which was really a way for us to, you know, bring in expert and uh, lean into the expertise of our customers or some of the brands that we work with and we admire. And uh, so me and the comms team came up with, with that idea. And, you know, in terms of buy-in, we had to do a handful of things. We had to pitch it to leadership first. Then we had to pitch it to peer-to-peer. -to -peer, and then we had to pitch it to people that would enable us to execute. So I think that that's the other piece knowing who are you going to have to get the buy-in from. Um, and um, we started, so we started with leadership, which was, I think out of all things, probably the easiest because, you know, we, we needed to present them with, why is this relevant? What is the opportunity? How this is going to be impact? Well, we're impacting what we're doing. How are we going to track this? And how do we expect, um, how do we define success of this initiative, right? So we presented those things and our CMO, um, was very supportive and said, go for it, run with it. Um, as we were doing that, I started having separate conversations with sales because I knew that going into it, that I needed to have the support of at least a few people because I needed to have host. And I wanted to elevate our sales team and I wanted to have them to be the leaders and the faces uh, behind this initiative. And so I started texting um, and calling and being like, hey, what do you think about something like this? Would you be interested in something like this? And I am thinking about this initiative because it's aligned with X, Y, and Z thing that I heard that you are already doing or that I heard that you're focusing on. So again, really thinking of your peer the same way that you would think of an audience and thinking what is relevant to them and how do I approach them with something that will be meaningful and helpful to um, the work that they are really trying to, uh, to create. So, um, I love that. Yeah. Wow. Sorry. You go ahead. No, no go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, uh, but yeah, so, so that, um, 
you know, and, and I think in reality, it sounds it sounds like it's a lot of homework. In reality, if you're if you are a naturally curious or naturally empathetic uh, person, which I believe most marketers are, you're probably already listening in to those conversations. You probably already know what motivates uh, those colleagues and team members, and so um, you know, ideally, it shouldn't be too much of of a stretch for you to be able to to have those com- those conversations. So. Um, the the um, I want to make sure that I also go back to your original question, which was on the kind of after that part. How do you go about it? Or yeah, for sure. And you know, it sounds like you know you you have the buy in right from the internal resources mm-hmm. and just team that you need mm-hmm. to move forward with this. And you know, we have a phrase that we use at Brighter Click, which is slow down to speed up. So it sounds like you took the time to slow down. Um, you know, get the buy in needed so that you can move at a faster pace with everyone involved. Yeah. And there wouldn't be a lot of tripping or confusion. And so let's, you know, we'll just keep with this specific example. You look at your content show and um, now you need to figure out topics or yeah. content to put out there, right? Yeah. Which, you know, is the voice of the customer, you know, yeah. if we're if we're aiming on meeting the customer where they're at. Mm-hmm. And, you know, without giving, you know, too much uh, leading into this, you know, I, I know that that will also involve your sales and product team, right? Because mm-hmm. they're... Mm-hmm. They're speaking to the customer more frequently than marketing is more often yep. than not, unless marketing yep. is making a point to have conversations with customers. So um, what's that? What did that process look like? You know, determining the topics and the content yep. and stuff to talk about. Yeah. So I think the mistake that I made in the past um, as I were in as I was in, in similar situation was to think that everything I wanted to do needed to be fully fleshed out perfect in this beautiful schedule and this beautiful deck or Excel. Um, and that typically does not set you up for success. And so what I learned is to, instead of, you know, building out a full plan or building out a full, um, a, you know, a full list of topics, what we did in this case was we started with a very straightforward brief, truly just a Google Doc. And we tagged few people that we knew, uh, you, you know, we tagged a kind of few uh, key people that uh, were going to be providing uh, providing feedback. And we said, hey, this is just a draft. Check it out. What do you think of some of these ideas? And also, here are a couple links um, that are in inspiration or some of the things that we, um, we reference or that we want to do or that we are trying to do. And I think by doing it that way, it lowers the barrier for feedback. So there, your product does not have to be perfect or like your V1 of what you're building does not have to be perfect. And also their feedback doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and again, it kind of goes back to what I said at the beginning of, are you bringing people on your journey? And so um, going back to that idea. So effectively, that's what we did, right? So we lined up a, a list of topic. We lined up a list of guests. Um, we even suggested some of the people that, you know, we even invited uh, some of the people um, that maybe we wanted to to have as speakers, uh, both internally and externally, and said like, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? How would you make it better? Um, and what are the areas that you think I'm missing? Actually asking that question, I think it's very, um, very, very important to really ask um, genuine feedback that says, hey, what am I missing? What are the things that I should be doing better here? Um, and so once we did that, honestly, the overall scope of the product actually got so much better of like of the idea actually got so much better because we were then able to take in that feedback and insert it where it was relevant. Um, yeah, you the one caveat that I will say is that sometimes people, you know, you don't have you can decide which feedback you're going to be listening to. You don't have to take all the feedback and use it. Uh, but I think the more you are providing the right context and asking the right question, the more likely you're going to be, or you know, the more the better outcome of the feedback um, you'll have. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, if everybody's aligned with the voice of the customer and, you know, really going off of that, it'll help with that overall revision process. There's a book I was reading recently called The First Time CEO. And Mm -hmm. one thing that she called out that they did, which was interesting, is they incorporated their SEO play into um, the longer tail content strategy they did. So they would launch blog idea or they would come up with ideas and then launch blog articles for it and then use traffic and engagement based on those blog articles to then use that for topics for webinars or for podcasts or for things like that as well which was pretty interesting to see 
Um, and this is something that you all currently are doing, like currently have live. What's, uh, what's the results or just kind of, you know, customer feedback that you've seen from this? Yeah, no, has been great. And actually, um, what you just, what you just said, I'll, I'll come back to that point because I think that was, was it was a great point, but, um, yeah, so it's been good. We launched the first, uh, um, the, the first two episodes are, are now live and then we, we filmed um the 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 following two and we have a couple more that um are going to be coming out this was our our pilot um i mean it's been awesome it's been awesome and i think even the call um we actually had our first episode with the head of direct to consumer at ollie you know the vitamin company yeah um she um and, and that's the thing right you need to have internal champions and then you need to have external champions and we we had a chance to meet with her at a previous companies and, you know, we saw her speaking, we saw how great she was um, and, and how relevant um, this story that she was going to be able to tell uh, was going to be for our audience, which, you know, is e-commerce leaders. And so we said, well, OK, can we pitch it to her? And so we went into and pitched it to her. And then for the second episode, um, we had Jenna Tannenbaum from uh, um, Who Gives a Crap, which is a really incredible uh, direct-to-consumer beautiful stunning toilet paper uh that is also um uh, you know um it, like just the the broader mission that they have around uh impact and sanitation it's it's is also really really interesting and so she came in and talked about content and so um effectively i think what we're trying to do is really a venn diagram of what are the topics that our customers are interested in what are the topics that we know that we can have thought leaders that can talk about this and what are topics that eventually we can help our audience uh, with, right? So if someone were to follow up and ask us, oh, how do you guys approach content or how do you guys measure um, uh, the, the kind of the performance of your content that we can, you know, we can link them to a solution that actually helps them with that. So, so yeah, so I think um, really thinking through, through those pieces is, is very important. And um, I like what you said about um, the reference around, you know, kind of choosing the right topics and SEO and how does that relate to, to the initiative that we're doing. We have a version of that uh, through LinkedIn, um, where a lot of the times we put out content on LinkedIn and, and, and what we're really doing is social listening um, and seeing how are people commenting or who is commenting, who is tagging who, and how are they interacting with, with the content that we're putting out. And then we use those insights from our customers um, to to shape the you know episode five actually came out of one of those comments or or some of the engagement that we we saw around um spe specific topic Crocs um you know Crocs the brand the shoes yeah, yeah. the shoes actually um the they're I think they are really the master like the the leaders when it comes to um really listening and and doing deep social listening and understanding like what are, what is what is their community suggesting? What are people um, in their user base uh, craving? Um, and if you look at all of the releases that they've had, all of the releases that they, all of the new product and collaboration that they did, it really came just from um, Twitter or Instagram and how, uh, and the things that their, their community was saying. So I think. Yep. No, no go, oh, ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say yeah, something. I was going to say uh, I think um, I think Obvi is another brand that oh, yeah. uh, e-commerce brand that is very good at listening to their audience and you know thriving off giving their community what they want and what they need as well. And you know I love to hear that the podcast or the the show is working well for you all. I personally think in the B two B world that educational content is the key to growth, not just for the the company putting it out, but also for their clients. And you know if you think about um, in your case, you all provide 3PL, right? Yeah. You provide, yeah. So, you know, revenue comes from growth for the companies that you're working with. So putting out educational content to help them grow in part helps your business grow as well because they're increasing volume and they're cre increasing output there. And, you know, I think educational content is where every B2B company should really be going um, to help, you know, have an understanding and clarity. And it also helps create transparency with the service or services that you provide or the software you provide so that clients can better understand it and better understand how to use it as well, which is great. 
Yeah, I mean, I remember uh, I remember reading from one of the two founders from Morning Brew put out, I think this was a while ago, um, uh, or, or uh, maybe not a while ago, you know, 2020, but um, it had this very simple formula around education plus community equal growth. And I think this for products that are complex, and this could be a B2B product, software tends to be, you know, kind of a a long sales cycle or a very complex decision. Um, but I think it also applies to direct to consumer because there are a lot of products that um, have a, a strong educational component. If you're, especially if you're doing something innovative, if you're doing something that is focused on sustainability, not everybody is an expert in, um, in, in um, sustainable supply chain, right? Or if you're doing something that has very, very specific product benefit, or if you're taking one ingredient and applying it to uh, a different product, you are going to uh, really educate your customer base on why you're doing what you're doing and how is it relevant for them. And so I think thinking through the lenses of education plus community equal growth, I think can, can lead to a lot of uh, long-term success. Yeah, there's an e-commerce company we worked with out of Australia, Great Wrap. And mm -hmm. they had the exact same thing. Yeah. They take the byproduct waste of potato chip um, production and it turns into little pellets and they turn yeah. that in cling wrap. Yeah. And we were able to triple their revenue two months in a row, but that was through running ads that were PR segments. So it was yeah. one to two minute, you know, interviews on channel 10, channel 11, Australia. Yeah. And that education really helped drive people to purchase their um, shameless plug for a client, anyone listening um, in the B2B space in shipping, they're now doing pallet wrap to increase their impact. You should reach out to Great Wrap um, so that you can talk to them. But, um, you know, we, we wrap up every episode with uh, three rapid fire questions. I did not give them to you ahead of time. So apologies for that, but I try to keep it um, spontaneous with it. So if you had to summarize everything we discussed into a marketing mindset, what mindset should marketers have uh, when it comes to getting buy-in uh, for creative strategy and then rolling it out? Uh, yeah, I think three, think of your internal audience the same way that you would think about your external audience and really focus on their why, their motivation and the incentive and, and how, um, how, how the, the project that you're working on can support not just what you're doing, but also what they're doing and, and contribute to, to broader growth. Um, and then the other piece, um, bring people on your journey early and often. Awesome. And for anyone listening that's in the stage of figuring out what they'd like to do in the marketing industry, what marketing roles do you think will have the highest demand in the next three to five years? Yeah. Um, I think, um, you know, I am biased because I worked uh, the product that I specifically lead marketing for is a product that uh, automates a lot of analysis and reporting uh, and really leverages AI to do a lot of those tasks. So I, my opinion might be a little bit biased, but I think um, the more you can be someone that knows how to ask the right question. So, um, you know, I think the more you can be someone that is right brain and left brain, I think that's where you're really going to be um, you know, I think there is where there's going to be a lot of opportunity. Um, I don't know if I can think of kind of specific roles, but I would say anyone that has, that is a fast learner and has a bias for action. So if you can combine kind of that attitude, I think you'll succeed at, at various marketing roles. I think if I were to be more specific, a role that's probably going away is just, you know, things that are replaceable. Obviously, you know, platforms, the, 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 the traditional paid media manager, like that's not going to exist the same way that it exists today. And so are you someone that knows how to uh, build communities? Are you someone that knows how to present yourself and a company in a way that's meaningful to your audience, whether your audience is investors or customers or, uh, you know, internal audience, right? Um, so I think, I mean, I think I don't think AI is going to take your job, but I think, I think the person that knows how to leverage a lot of tools to do things faster and, 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 um, and automate a lot of the manual task, I think that that person will take your job. And so you want to be someone that knows how to use and lean into technology, but also like, 
shine for the things that are, you know, humans. Sorry, that was not a succinct answer, but <laughs> oh, good. That was good. And tell us, uh, where can listeners connect with you and learn more about yourself or CART? Um, LinkedIn is probably the best place. Um, and, you know, I think actually my email is even on LinkedIn. So um, I, I, I try to respond to, to most of the people that, that message me. Um, yeah, so LinkedIn is great. And do you have a specific tag name or anything with LinkedIn or? Um, like my, my. To uh, search. Oh, just first name, last name. Laura con la grande, and you can find me. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Well, it was great having you on the show. I appreciate you coming on today. Oh, thank you so much. This is great.